And Gibbs, you've been to both. That's that's two mentions of each. That ought to be good for some free meals. I would think that's <laughs> what you're angling for. Welcome to PTI, boys and girls. We will get to the Russell Westbrook trade in a few moments. But we begin today with baseball's trade deadline and your Cubs, Will Bond, sending their stars all across the country. Former MVP Chris Bryant goes to the Giants. Anthony Rizzo joins Joey Gallo as left-handed power hitters in Yankee Stadium. Craig Kimbrell gets sent across town to the White Sox, and Javi Baez lands with the Mets, where he will ultimately move to second base in deference to Francisco Lindor. So, Will Bond, which one of these ex-Cubs landed in the best spot? Yeah, Tony, I'll answer the question. I, you know... I don't know. I think Kimbrell actually landing with the White Sox, where they've got a real strength now at that bullpen, particularly in the back end and setting it up, and Hendrick and Kopech and Kimbrell. I think Kimbrell did. Nobody else would think that, but that, that's what I think. And it's a depressing day here. This day has taken a toll. It started last night when Rizzo was traded. I was sitting outside having dinner at Gibson's, and people just start shouting, and people are depressed. And look, Tony. There's, there's, there's a lot of great teams we've had in some of our lifetimes for those of us older than 50 years old. Um, the 85 Bears were certainly a one-hit wonder, but what a hit. The, the long run of the Bulls was a long run, and it had the greatest player, Michael Jordan, maybe in any sport. But the Cubs, Tony, as you know, I mean, people sat in cemeteries and took transistor radios, and they let them play for their dead loved ones. And that, those teams included Bryant, Rizzo, and Baez at the heart of of those teams, Schwarber and Lester yeah. gone. But but these guys, Tony, and you know this because you lived it with me, it's hard. It's a hard, sad, angry day here, depending on your specific emotions. I, again, I think Kimbrell, but I'm, I can't even analyze it because I'm just, I'm not, I'm unhappy. So I would have said Kimbrell too, but my wise guy answer would have been because he doesn't even have to switch apartments and he can stay in his own bed and then pitch for the other team because it's just across town. Bryant lands in a pretty good spot. The Giants are in front in their particular division. Of course, the White Sox are in front in theirs, but with the worst record of the American League league leaders. But the biggest league. Um, <laughs> biggest yeah, league. Baez, huge league. Baez lands in a team that's going to make the playoffs and probably win the NL East, the Mets. And who's the other person? Rizzo. Rizzo. The Yankees are out of the playoffs now. Let me get the numbers on this because they are well out They're of the playoffs. They're nine back, right, Tony? They're Eight and a half back of the Red Sox right now, seven back of Tampa Bay, three and a half back of Oakland for the second wild card. But I'm going to tell you something. I actually think that it might be Rizzo landing in the best spot because Rizzo and Gallo together with yeah. a short right field porch yeah. in Yankee yeah. Stadium, they're both great fielders. Rizzo's a contact hitter. I think they can actually make up some ground. I'm interested really? in your sadness because you've been looking at this for a long time and you said yeah. you were okay with it. What yeah. happened to my team, I'm not okay with it because my team just won less than two years ago, and they are Gave up your bereft. Ace. Yeah. Tony, Tony, I'm sad. I get it. I mean, I understand it needed to be done. I just have to do a big, huge fight with my brother because people are taking opposite sides. It's like, what are we doing? I'm like, we're trying to win again. Just like in yeah. 13 and 14 when we assembled those guys, now we got to get new guys. Because our guys, the ones we love, they're not winning. They're not playing well together. So this is, this is an emotional, a lot of emotions rolling around out here, and I'm sure in Washington. Although I like the prospects, I think if those prospects are as great as the Dodgers farm system has produced over the last 60 years, you could be back up there. Your Rizzo might have done a really good job in terms of the GM Chicago born of the Nationals. No. The Dodgers no. made a huge move of their own. We're going to get to that now specifically. Landing Max Scherzer and Trey Turner from your Nationals. At this time yesterday, reports had Scherzer heading to the Padres. So the Dodgers managed to improve their own team while blocking access to its rival. LA is three games behind San Francisco in the standings tone. But do you think this trade puts the Dodgers in the driver's seat in the West? Chris Bryant notwithstanding going to the Giants, I think this puts the Dodgers not just in the driver's seat, the entire front seat, the entire back seat, the entire way back seat. I now believe, because I love the Dodgers lineup, and with Scherzer and Turner, I love it even more. I now believe that for the Giants and the Padres to sit in that car and contact the Dodgers, they're going to have to get on a phone. They're going to be so far back. But I'm going to take the Nats' point of view for a little while here, as you did with the Cubs. 
I'm okay with Scherzer moving, and I do think that Scherzer is the Verlander in this piece. I think right. he's the big chess Good piece analogy. in all of it. Good analogy. I'm okay because Scherzer delivered, yeah. and Scherzer's older, and if he wants to go, I'm okay. I can't understand the Trey Turner thing at all. He's an all-star shortstop. Yeah. These people don't grow on trees. Mike, within the last two seasons now, the Nats have let Anthony Rendon go, an all-star third baseman. They have traded Trey Turner. That would have been an all-star left side of the infield for yes. 10 years. I, I don't understand why you make that trade. And you mentioned Mike Rizzo as we were moving to this story. He gutted the Nationals like a fish. When you look at how this is, they won in 2019, it's less than two years. Scherzer, their best pitcher, is gone. Trey Turner, batting 322, their best infielder, is gone. All right? Let me get to the other Don't people forget, that are gone Schwarber, here. Don't forget, Schwarber. Kyle Schwarber, gone Schwarber, now, too. Kyle Schwarber to the Red Sox only hit a million home runs in three weeks. And while I hate their bullpen, the entire back end of their bullpen, Daniel Hudson and Brad Hand, are gone. So you talk about anger. It's not that I have anger. I'm stunned. It's like I fell out of an elevator. I, I, I just, there, Tony, it's all gone Tony, for me. Baseball teams do this multiple teams every year. And most of the time, it seems stupid to me. At least the Cubs and the Nationals, not only did they win, but they won in the way they're trying to win now. At least, see, it's proven. It's like the Green Bay Packers, you know, trying to replace Aaron Rodgers after they did it with Farvey. Okay, so at least they did it. The Cubs and the Nationals, they drafted, they traded well, they did it smartly, and they moved up and they won. And so now they're okay. saying, okay, That's right. the we did great. the best we could do. We're going to try to use the they same did. blueprint. But, Tony, how about okay. all the teams that don't win and they just do this willy-nilly and you go, what the hell are they you doing? You talked about prospects. Yeah. Bad teams trade for prospects. Good teams buy the best players. Let's move Not, to the big I basketball trade. I don't know trade. about that, Tone, but all right, we'll move on. But I don't yes, know about that. true. Washington no, sent another Washington team it. made it. worse. Made worse. Washington sent Russell Westbrook to the Lakers last night. The Wizards got a few starters in return, but they're not the story. The story is the Lakers gearing up for a big run with Westbrook, LeBron James, and Anthony Davis, and an assortment of other human beings to be named later in the other positions. Wilbon, do you think this brings LeBron significantly closer to another title? I, you know, I don't know. I got to see who the other teams wind up with. They, they had the first strike. But I want to see, like, how does Milwaukee enhance its team from coming off a title? Do the Suns, if they're going to keep Chris Paul now because Westbrook's gone to the Lakers, if, are they going to enhance their team? I mean, there's too much we don't know. But let me just say this. Um, LeBron likes these super situations, and he's certainly got one now. But, Tony, the name of the game increasingly every year in the last 15, and now it's just so acute, it's shooting the basketball. And this does not help that. I am not about to talk down a Laker team with three first ballot Hall of Famers and guys. Come on, seriously. These are great, 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 great players. Not about to talk that down. But I'm not going to presume that they're going to win because we just presumed the Lakers are going to win. I hear all the, my friends, the talking heads who cover basketball, and all they want to do is hand it to Brooklyn and the Lakers. And I'm like, well, wait a minute. I mean, neither one of them got, you know, to the finals, conference finals. So what are we talking about? People can still get injured. People get old. They can be injured again. So there's so much here, Tony. Can, do you like the move of the Lakers going out getting Russell Westbrook? How, of course. Except now they have no money and they have no shooters because they dealt them all to your Wizards. Can they get shooters? Yeah. Maybe, but they got to have yeah. them. So I would say that on paper the Lakers are the favorite in the West and on paper the Nets are the favorite in the East, but that's just on paper. That's just on paper. Um, I'm going to attack this from a different angle. I first heard about this yesterday, and my immediate thought was, why would LeBron James want Russell Westbrook on his team? Russell Westbrook is a ball-dominating guard. You don't get triple-doubles if your hand isn't on the ball for 40 minutes. But then I pulled back for a second, and I said this. No move is made without LeBron's approval. LeBron had to approve this. They had to go to LeBron. He's, in effect, the GM there now, like he's been a GM at every other team he's been in. And so I thought, well, why? Okay, LeBron's getting older. Maybe he wants Westbrook to alleviate 
the stress yes. of having to play yes. hard for 40 minutes a game. Well, and maybe this allows him to play hard when he needs to play hard. I just wanted to have one small word about the Wizards here. I'm not knocking any of the players they got, okay, right. that came over, although I think they may stop the development of their most recent three number one draft picks. I just don't think, Mike, I watched that team. Right. Russell Westbrook was great for them. He was. he was great for Bradley Beal. I don't think they're a better team without Russell Westbrook. I do not. You know what, I Tony? I think they're a good team, potentially, without Russell Westbrook because I think some of the holes they had are filled. And it will allow – you mentioned Russell Westbrook was a ball-dominant player for the Wizards, too. And what this will yes. do – Kyle Kuzma, I'll make a bet with you right now. Kyle Kuzma will go back – to the 18 points a game he was averaging early in his Lakers career before LeBron got there. Kuzma will be a better player. I'm not saying he's going to replace Russell Westbrook. I'm not. But the players they got, and Avia's going to come back, and he's going to be better. Hachimura will have space to grow now, and he'll get to touch we'll the see. ball too. Tony yeah, and Bradley I mean, we'll Beal, see. Bradley Beal can get to dominate the ball a little bit more, and I'm okay with that. Here's, here's, I here's like what the Bradley Wizards Beal has been in his career. Bradley Beal's been a player who scores a lot of points on teams that lose. So yep, we'll see. Yep, yep, Let's take a yep. break. Coming up, Cade Cunningham went first in the NBA draft last night. What's the best word, or two or three when you hear mine, to describe the entire event? To turn into word nerds, let's get the first one from the producer over the loudspeaker. Last night's NBA draft was blank. Um, it was three hours long, or maybe even longer, because I bailed out on it early. I knew hardly anybody involved in it. They're G League people. They're one and dones. There's some foreign talent that I'm unfamiliar with. I was concerned about where Cade Cunningham would go because I saw him. Jalen Suggs, who I liked a lot at Gonzaga. Who's the kid from Baylor I liked a lot? Davion Mitchell, I think. And, but after that, I didn't really know anybody. And the people that are drafted high, they go to bad teams. That's the way it works. So they're two years away from being two years away unless Chris Paul gets there. And, and that will help them. The really good teams... They don't really play rookies. They don't have to play rookies. The NFL drafts for need, so the really good teams, the rookies play, and the NBA drafts for potential, so you have to wait a while to see who blossoms. And, Tony, you may wait a while. They're under the radar, but there's some players. I mean, I, under the radar is my word, hyphenated. And I think this draft has people from various corners of the world. And no, you're not going to see him when you go to bed at 9 o'clock in the East. There's a big man from Texas. I don't see how he lasted that long. He's got more spring than, a, you know, two box mattresses. There's a kid who played in Turkey, another big man. He just seems to be a beast. Let me just mention, you can win now without a lottery pick. We know this because Milwaukee just did. Giannis was chosen 15th, Drew Holiday 17th, Middleton 39th in the second round. So if you scout. And you scout the world. That's right. You can come up with players. Right. You don't have to finish one, two, or three to get in the that's big right. money. And so that's why most, this, this most draft NBA has coaches, guys. Most good NBA coaches would rather have a, a young veteran than a rookie. That's what they would rather have. What's sure. next? Absolutely. 200-meter backstroke silver medalist Ryan Murphy's contention that there's doping in swimming was blank. It's provable. Okay, he went out there. He got the silver in the backstroke. Uh, the 200, a bronze in the 100. All right, he was beaten only by Russian swimmers. And he made the comment that he felt he was swimming in an unclean race. Because everybody knows the Russian athletes have been doping for a lot of years. Everybody understands that. And then he said, which is amazing to me, he said, I'm not making any allegations. Well, yes, you are. So test these people. Test everybody who, who gets a medal. Test everybody in every event. And if you can bounce them, Bounce them. That's the way it works. If the World Anti-Doping Authority isn't good enough to beat the chemists in a country, that's the way it goes. And you have to shut up and then wait until the guy's autobiography if he reveals something. Yeah, but you don't have to shut up. And Ryan Murphy didn't. And what he said was bodacious. It was, Tony. And they were fighting words. And we know because... Somebody in Russia issued a statement with some fighting words. I mean, this was yep. like, let's start the Cold War. Let's drop the gloves and get at it right now. This was, oh, my God, this statement from Russia. And so Ryan Murphy, he did. These were fighting words that he spoke out loud. And he felt it. I'm, I'm, I'm fine that he did it. But these, this is a bodacious statement that he had Wilbon, in the aftermath you of that and finish. I, 
You and I have been to Olympics where entire weightlifting teams have been asked to leave. <laughs> yes. They've been cheating for 100 years. 100 and taken years. To the Let's plane. take one last break. <laughs> Still to come, Carson Wentz doesn't last long at Colts camp. And will Joey Votto homer for a seventh straight game tonight? Tony, we have seen people ushered out to the flights. Your seventh birthday, Bud Selig, the longtime commissioner of baseball and the only one who owned a team. Selig owned the Milwaukee Brewers. He started out as a car salesman. His first name is Alan, but when you sell cars, you're everybody's buddy. Is this a great country or what? Seelig is sensitive to criticism. He once told Wilbon in the early days of PTI that when he saw his name in the rundown on the right side of the screen, he went, oh no. Seelig ran baseball for 23 years. Under his watch, there was a strike. Interleague play began. Steroids flourished and were rooted out. Miami, Colorado, Arizona, Tampa Bay, and Washington got teams, and Houston switched leagues. Selig was a dear close friend of Henry Aaron, going back to when Aaron played for the Milwaukee Braves. Wilbon, you've had dinner with both of them, and I know you love Selig. That's true, Tony. Uh, Bud and Sue Selig, of all the people I've been fortunate to know in sports, hard to have better dinner companions than Bud and Sue Selig and Henry Aaron. Seriously, they're some of the greatest listening of all time. And by the way, we were necessarily critical of Bud because that's what we do for a living. Baseball did fine with Bud Selig running it for a lot, a lot, a lot of years. Just fine. Indeed it did. It really Happy did. anniversary, Pete Rose. Talk about people you would not invite to the same dinner party, Bud Selig and Pete Rose. <laughs> Around this day, 43 years ago, Rose singled off Phil Necro in Atlanta to extend his consecutive game hitting streak to 44. The next game, Rose went 0 for 4 and the streak was over. Nobody's gotten a 40 since. As impressive as 44 games is, it is still 12 short of tying Joe DiMaggio's 56 straight, a record that will probably never be broken. On a personal note, I was in and out of the entourage that followed Rose around during his streak. I was at Shea Stadium when the Reds played the Mets a few days before this game. Rose came out every day before and after games to talk to the press and was routinely affable, funny and delightful, even with all of that pressure. Rose was uniquely suited to attention. He loved it. It is oxygen to him. Tony, if I filled up a lineup of my, the, the 10 most important players of my formative years, years when I obsessed over baseball, Pete Rose is at the top of the lineup. He is. I caught the end yeah. of Mays and Banks and Aaron, not the end, but you know, sort of the second half. Pete Rose, I saw the whole thing. And Pete, and I don't know what to make of him, Tone. I'm still conflicted about Pete Rose. I don't know if you are, but he, I don't care if you, how conflicted you are, he's there. He's a standard bearer, whether we like it or not. Happy trails and our well wishes to Terry Francona, the Cleveland Indians manager and a favorite guest of the PTI program, is stepping away from the team for the rest of the season due to a bulky left hip and a left foot confined to a boot. He will undergo hip replacement surgery on Monday. Francona said, quote, it's been beating me up. I have to get healthy or I can't do this job. Francona missed much of last season with gastrointestinal and blood clotting issues, which required surgery. Francona has 723 wins in nine years in Cleveland. That's just five victories fewer than the all-time team leader, Lou Boudreau. And of course, Francona has two World Series championships in Boston. DeMarlo Hale will take over for Francona. There is, of course, chatter that Francona at 62 may be unable to continue managing. But on the PTI show, we hope that when Cleveland returns next season as the Guardians, Francona returns with them. Tony, I had that left foot in a boot thing. Uh, kept me off the golf course, as you know, for about six months. I hope Terry's yeah. back sooner than that. Not just one of our favorite guests, one of my favorite two or three managers of, of the last 30 years, and we do wish well, Terry Francona. Yeah. Let's go to the big finish quickly, if we could. Let's do it. Uh, Colts quarterback Carson Wentz, your boy, Wilbon, out indefinitely with a foot injury. Cause for concern? Yeah, there's some word that involves bone, ligament, possible surgery. Ugh. Yeah. U.S. women's soccer beat the Netherlands in penalties to advance to the semis. Big deal? Big deal that it went to penalty kicks. I would have thought yeah. they'd win in regulation. The women's Olympic basketball team beat Japan, and the men play the Czech Republic tomorrow. Your thoughts? Tony, some of those previous Czech Republic rosters could have really put some scare into the U.S. team. Needing to win to stay alive, I think we'll win handily. Djokovic lost in the semis of the Olympics, so no Golden Slam. Are you disappointed? I'm not. He is. Last one, Joey Votto tries to home in his seventh straight game tonight. Do you like